back to CTN. I'm your host, Robert Van Sluden. This episode, we're going to talk about some particular aspects of Objective-C. And we're going to start with some definitions. Dynamic typing. Determining an object's class at runtime. Now, notice I said object, not variable type, because there is a C subset of Objective-C, which is obviously statically typed in that types are known at compile time. Dynamic binding. Determining the method to invoke at runtime. Well, <laughs> if I'm determining the type, the class, the object's class at runtime, obviously I'm determining the method to invoke at runtime. Now, in an object-oriented system where you have inheritance and polymorphism, obviously you need some degree of dynamic typing and dynamic binding. However, in Objective-C, even when types are fully known and there's no polymorphism involved, it always does dynamic typing. Now you may ask, well, in the code that you've shown me, all the object pointers seem to have very clear types. Yes, that's true. In actuality, they're just there for, win for error checking, compile time errors, which is very useful. It's much better to detect errors at compile time than it is to detect at runtime. But even if the type is fully known and there's no polymorphism involved, dynamic typing is used in Objective-C followed by dynamic binding. Now there's a type, ID, which is a data type which is a generic object pointer. Now obviously if you define an object pointer as type ID you don't know the class and yet that's another reason for dynamic typing followed by dynamic binding. A couple other definitions. Nil. It's an object of type ID which represents a dummy object. You can send messages to it and they just fall on the floor. And in fact, object pointers that are uninitialized are automatically initialized to nil. Selector. It's the name used to select the method to execute. It's the mechanism that's used to choose the appropriate method. Selectors are put in tables internally. Let's go over to Xcode and play around with some of this. Okay, what I have here is a simple OSX terminal app that I'm going to use to discuss the concepts that we went over in the previous slide. Now I'm doing this because it's just simply less overhead and it was easier to put together. Ignore auto release pool. We'll talk about that at some other point. ID is a pointer to a generic object. And since it's a pointer, there's no asterisk in this statement. So OBJ is declared as a pointer to an object, some object. At this point it's uninitialized and uninitialized pointers are set equal to nil and nil is essentially a dummy object. So this statement obj equals nil really does nothing because we already had it up here. Since I have a generic object, the compiler isn't told what it is. I can send any valid selector or valid method to it. In this case, I'm using enable, which is an invalid method you can execute on controls, such as sliders and buttons. I'm going to go ahead and run this. 
What ends up happening is it completes successfully and get a return code of zero. If you go down to the bottom of this code, there's a log statement and a return value. Sending a message to nil does nothing. It also does not create an error. Now there are cases where you want that to have happen, believe it or not. You can test OBJ for nil if you're particularly concerned about not having an initialized pointer. You can also nest calls. If this returns nil and invoking in sending a message to that will then in turn nil. So you could have a nested statement and then test it for nil. If I uncomment this line of code, what's happening here is I'm sending obj foobar. Now foobar is not a valid selector in the system. There is no foobar anywhere. I get a compiler error. What the compiler error is telling me is there's no known instance method for selector foobar. Well, thank you. Not valid. If we move on to this case, chance to in this case I'm taking this generic thing OBJ and I'm setting it equal to a NS mutable array object. I'm going to now alloc it and init it. So it isn't nil anymore. It's a mutable array. I'm going to send enable to obj. Now, it turns out that NS mutable array doesn't have an enable. But at this point, the compiler still believes obj is just simply an ID, and I can do anything I want to it, as long as it's a valid selector. If I go ahead and run this, I get a runtime error. The program essentially crashed. Thread one signals sig abort. Okay. So if you send a method to an object and it can't handle it, it's going to throw an exception. Now that said, there are methods on classes that you can ask whether or end objects whether an object supports a particular method so you can do some runtime checking in this case we it's a true case of dynamic typing because we didn't tell the compiler what obj actually was i'm going to do this differently now comment this out again clear out what we have I'm going to comment this last section in this case I have a new pointer and this time it is an NS mutable array it's called array and I'm setting it equal to the same thing I did before it's an NS mutable array alloc init so this pointer array points to a mutable array I'm going to attempt or I'm just going to write a piece of code here that sends the method enable to array well the compiler is complaining because now it knows the type it's been told and it says no visible interface for NS mutable array declared declares the selector enable there's a difference between essentially dynamic typing versus static typing in the sense that it's 
telling the compiler what you're doing specifically and you're getting compile time error messages. Now you may ask why would I use ID? Well the reason is there are cases where you want to deal with objects generically. An example would be an array is just simply a collection of objects. It doesn't know the type and it doesn't care. You can be heterogeneous. So what is kept are objects of type ID. We're going to stop here. I hope things are becoming clearer. This is going to make much more sense when we start building more sophisticated um, applications in upcoming CTN episodes. Thanks for watching.